Okay. Rocky was from the uh, Walking the Razor's Edge album, which was released in, uh, I believe, 1984. Uh, it was the album after No Rush for the Wicked, which was our first album in capital EMI. And um, Heavy Metal Love had been a, a big hit for us in the U.S., and Canada had kind of been caught behind the eight ball because in Canada, the record company released uh, Does a Fool Ever Learn? And um, so on this one, everybody wanted to jump on the track, and uh, when the song came out, it became a big hit uh, in a couple of weeks. The song was actually released before the, uh, uh, previously, about two weeks before, on a Labatt's Blue commercial. Uh, Capital had made this deal with uh, uh, Labatt's, where instead of going, give me an R-O-C-K, they did give me a B-L-U-E, and uh, I went, give me a B-L-U-E, what you got? Blue, Labatt's Blue, anyway. It came out before the song actually got released to radio in Capitol, and our manager, Bill Sipe, freaked out, phoned uh, Labatt's and threatened to uh, uh, sue them if they didn't withdraw the song, which they did. The compromise they came to was to uh, uh, use the song uh, uh, Heavy Metal Love instead, so I went to Heavy Metal Blue or something like that uh, for that song. The song was recorded at uh, Phase One in Toronto, and it was brought to us by Tom Tremuth, who was instrumental in getting us signed to Capital EMI in 1983. Um, the song was written by uh, 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 Bob Halligan and came to us uh, by Tom, like his Tom Tamuth, who was working with uh, Barry Bergman out of New York City. Barry Bergman um, uh, had broke all sorts of acts in the United States, uh, uh, like uh, ACDC, I think he represented them when they first came here. Anyway, he had some connection like that, plus he had a stable of writers, and one of them was Bob Halligan, who ended up writing songs for Judas Priest, uh, Some Heads Are Gonna Roll, uh, Take These Chains, uh, and then he went on to uh, Nashville, where he writes today. Um, anyway, the song came to us. At first, we didn't want to do the song. Uh, Paul and I had already written two songs for the album with uh, rock in the, in the uh, lyrics, so uh, we weren't too happy about having yet another one. And uh, Tom uh, Tremuth and, and William Sleip, my manager, convinced us we needed to do that song. Uh, and so we learned it. Uh, I wrote the lyrics for the verse, and I said to my, my manager, Bill, ask Barry if I get a writing credit. And he went to uh, Barry Bergman, and Barry Bergman basically said that uh, the song was the chorus, and uh, if we push the uh, idea of getting a writing credit for me that uh, they just take the song to somewhere else. So I never ever got credit for the lyrics, but I wrote the verses. Um, we first played the song at the El Rosa Villa in Columbus, Ohio, where Dimebag Darrell ended up uh, being assassinated a few years later. Um, we put it on stage with Animal House, uh, also from the album. and. Um, <clears throat> Once the song came out, we uh, uh, were sent to do the video at uh, the Toronto Brickyards uh, by the Don Valley, and um, we showed up, Rob Cordley did the video, and it was in the springtime, and it was freezing cold, and we had to dress in these burlap bags, and we were in our bare feet. The shoot uh, took two days, and um, on the second day, it was really cold, and uh, Rob Cordley had fired some of the guys uh, that were hired as extras because they were molesting the girls on the set. And uh, they were doing two versions. One was for Playboy Channel where the girls went topless. And then there was a straight version where they had their tops back on. Anyway, some of the guys were coming on to the girls and they had to fire them the second day, which screwed up their continuity in the uh, shoots somewhat. But uh, we continued shooting that day in the cold. Uh, we had to stand around this cold, freezing water. and. Brent Derner, who played guitar for me at that time, uh, played for the band, rather, I shouldn't say for me, but uh, Brent Derner had the idea of coming up out of the water because it was kind of like the Flintstones, the video where we were coming from that primordial swamp, rock you, you know, get it, rock, playing rock. And uh, Brent had this idea of coming up out of the water playing guitar, and we got right to the end of shooting that day, about two o'clock in the morning, and um, Rob Corley wanted to call it a day, and. Uh, uh, call it a rap and uh, we insisted and a big argument sued between my manager uh, uh, Brent, uh, me and, and Rob Corley about doing the shot and he says okay but we're going to do it in one take 
So Brent had to get under the water and it was cold out. And uh, he had to hold his breath and then went, okay, roll it. And he come up out of the water and that's that famous scene from the video where he comes up uh, playing guitar. We were so friggin' cold. Uh, we were, he was literally blue. We wrapped him in blankets. We all slept in the cars, uh, our cars that night because uh, we had to go to the lawyer in Toronto the next morning. So, um, we all got up in the morning. We had to go inside to uh, the Toronto Brickyards and take a cold, ice cold shower. And uh, then we went to the lawyers um, in Toronto. And then we had to drive all the way to Kitchener, Ontario. And it was, um, and we had to do an Oktoberfest picture for David Muntz, who had got assigned to EMI Capital. And I still have that picture. We're all in dress in leader hose, and a couple of us are naked, I think, with roses stuck in our ass. And uh, we did this leader hose in Oktoberfest picture for David Muntz, but that was the filming of Rock You. Uh, Rock You ended up becoming a huge hit for the band, and uh, it drove that album to gold status. We actually got the news backstage when we were playing with Rush at uh, Nassau Coliseum. It's Nassau or Meadowlands, one of the two, and uh, I have that in film as well, uh, where they told us the album had gone gold in Canada, and somebody in the background went, yeah, in a couple of weeks it's going to go platinum, and everybody laughed with a big joke, and in two weeks that album did go platinum because of that song.